we've lived in Canada for more than 40 years and I've never been to the nation's capital for a visit. Well, that's obviously being corrected today as I've come to visit Ottawa for the first time and also cover it for First Drop. So tag along as we discover the city a little bit more organically. I don't know a lot about the history of this city other than what I've read about it I'm really prefacing this video. Um, so I'm not going to be really giving you a historical document, really just an impression of what the city is about from my first impressions having visited here as a tourist. This is the center of government for the country and because of that it's not the most craziest of cities although it does actually have some crazy pockets which we'll be checking out a little bit later on. So come along and enjoy the tour of Ottawa as I really organically discover it over the two days that I'm here. It's Ottawa, Ontario on first drop. In all my years of living in this country, I've never been to the Houses of Parliament. I've been to the White House, I've been to the Capitol, but I had never actually visited our own capital or my own capital until this year. Now I just finished two tours, well two individual tours, one of the Senate and one of the actual House of Commons in its current temporary home, the West Block. Here's a little intro to the West Block before I went inside. Currently in the West Block, a temporary parliament has been set up for the 10 year renovation of the main House of Parliament which is what we're going to be touring today. It's supposed to be a very, uh, it's supposed to honor the original chamber very well and be very creative with use of the atrium of this original building, of which we're about to discover now. Okay, we just actually went through an airport style screening and now we are in an underground lobby to take us to the West Block. I didn't know any of this existed. This is quite impressive. We are completely underground in Parliament Hill. tour begins shortly. There is of course a boutique conveniently situated in the waiting area here. That would be us. This would be the last point that we can take video. Behind me is the Senate of Canada, which actually wasn't built for the purpose that it's being used right now. It's actually a temporary home for the Senate and used to be the central station for Ottawa as a train station. It's a remarkable Beaux Arts building. It was originally converted from a convention center after its use as a train station for the Senate today and opened only five years ago for its current purpose as per the original Senate is located in center block on the other side of the street of which is going through a extensive largest renovation of parliament ever.
that is the tours done. Really impressive, really uh, formulaic and really you could tell that they do those tours on the regular every single day routinely so it didn't leave yeah it, it wasn't like going to a spooky museum or anything like that it definitely felt very corporate and very uh, as per what a government institution would do for a tour but that being said free of charge to do both tours you just have to register online through email to select a time it was super easy to do that you come with your code you scan it off of your phone you're voila, you're inside, and you do that obvious airport screening before you go in. Uh, the Senate wasn't as interesting as I'd say the Houses of Parliament were. The Houses of Parliament and the temporary setup that they got going on there is actually very impressive from an architectural standpoint. Um, getting into the Senate, the building as well, uh, the train station is probably one of the highlights. If you do like a Beaux Arts, a Beaux Arts style of architecture, then you can't really miss that. It's a beautiful building inside. A lot of train stations in Canada were built around the same time of which that one, like Union station harbors a lot of similarities uh, the houses of uh, the house of parliament really impressed overall it's it, there's a very weird feeling you get when you're actually on the floor of the house of parliament um, or at least I kind of felt that um, you kind of I don't know it just felt like okay serious business is done here but I'd say that it felt like more business was done in the Senate than in the houses of parliament for what it felt like it was just the parliament was just a, more of a spectacle really uh, whereas the Senate had more of a okay this is a very bureaucratic uh, institution that we have here that's in charge of setting up the country and keeping it running. I hope you enjoyed the tour and the photos and the brief amount of video that I could get you of those buildings. Definitely get down here if you're in Ottawa and you're interested in government of any sort. You probably should check out this tour because it was pretty good. For zero price, you can't really beat that. And also, brilliant architecture and a lot of information about the, the actual government procedural or the procedure of government here in Canada, which if you're not familiar with it, then uh, yeah, the instructors were great. My instructor's name was Julia. She was very informative, as I was definitely impressed by the tour overall. It was very short and sweet, only 40 minutes for the House of Commons. Um, but any questions that you may have can make that tour obviously more intensive and longer as you wish. House of Commons tour is a pretty pedestrian tour and very quick and efficient. The visitor center was well put together. Um, I did ask the question when it was actually available and they put that visitor center together for the whole renovation. They really thought this out and that started in 2018. On this side is the East Block, which is actually the oldest of the Parliament buildings on Parliament Hill. It was the original home of Parliament back in the day before the construction of center block as you see beyond here. You of course have the Rideau Canal from this side where we are now currently on Parliament Hill. You can see we're going to be touring that in a bit however. The only part of the building remaining from the fire of 1916 which essentially destroyed Parliament and center block is the Houses of Parliament Library, of which you see here, the Rotunda Building. It has survived. However, it's not available to visit, as it's behind the construction hoardings. We are at the rear section, but pretty close to the west block here on Parliament Hill, overlooking the Ottawa River. And you can see just in the distance all the bridges of which that complex where the old power mills and stuff are located is where Shodier Falls is of which we will be visiting later on. You also have a brilliant view of a not so brilliant skyline of Hall. It does include some unique buildings including the Museum of Canadian History and Civilization. It's a Sunday right now, and just after, uh, or just getting onto the dinner hour, so it's a little bit busy here at the Houses of Parliament. You'll notice that they have this entire section closed off. 
because it's going through a 15 year renovation of which uh, if depending on the tour that you take there are different interpretations of whether or not this is actually going to open um, on a selected day. Uh, that's all I'll say because I took one tour of the Senate of which she gave a date of when it's supposed to reopen and in the House of Parliament tour in the West Block behind me the, she said it's up for determination when the center block behind me will reopen up. So unfortunately it's going to be a long wait for a vlog from that particular building. Um, hopefully I get it in my lifetime because uh, uh, the tentative date was 2031 for that building to reopen. You can also take tours of the east block but unfortunately today they were not available so we are not taking a tour of that section of the grounds but that is going to leave us for now for Parliament as we get on to Ottawa proper. Behind me is the Rideau Canal, really the chief engineering project of this city uh, back in the day. It's now over 200 years old and still one of the longest canals in North America, uh, purposely built for the War of 1812 and to get uh, basically supplies and ships from Ottawa, or formerly by town, to the St. Lawrence River just below here, by about 100 kilometers south of Ottawa. I apologize if any of those details are not exact. I'm doing the best I can. I don't want to be seen as a historian. This is the Fairmont Chateau Laurier, which is part of the original CN Group hotels that are dotted all over the major cities of this country attached to the train network, which would make sense why the main train station is right next door. Of course not in use anymore and now the Senate. So we've come from Rue Rideau across from the Fairmont down across to Sussex Street, Sussex Drive, which is a fairly significant road if you don't know. You will know soon enough in the vlog. But the real reason why we've come down here is because on the right hand side next to the Chateau Laurier that you can see this is essentially the extension of that building. On the right hand side we have a collection of also older looking buildings, but they are actually much older than the Chateau Laurier, as this is Bytown, the original location of the town of Ottawa, or how it started. We're going to go and do a little bit of a weave around this very unique and lively section of the city. We're going to get a quick bite to eat, but we'll be coming back here later as well. As you can see the Chateau Laurier on this side. A little fun fact for the Chateau Laurier, its original architect unfortunately did not get to see it finished as they were one of the original passengers on the ill-fated voyage of the Titanic. There's some of the original buildings of the town dating over 200 years old. Of course, right across the street you have one of the largest malls in Canada, oddly enough. One thing I do love about this area, however, if you get an idea of like the old time feel of this section of town. There you have it. This is a tavern. I kind of want to have some food here, but we'll do a little bit of a explore. Welcome to Byward Market. The original market just being right over here. There's a lot of interesting spots here that I'd like to point out, including Chateau Lafayette, 
a dive bar that we might end up later. There's also another great dive bar called Dominion, right over here, that we might also end up later. So we have a place called Zach's Breakfast, Lunch and Dinner, which kind of looks at exactly what we're looking for here. We have a nice Irish pub here. We have a nice rooftop patio as well. This definitely looks like the Irish Quarter, all right, as there's three Irish pubs right on this block alone. Okay, we've come to the other side now to wander in this space. The keg and stuff, there's a couple restaurants on that side, but it kind of ends over here. There's a brilliant patio up there that um, I'm sure is pricey to check out. Nice classic old building that you can see. There's a lot of history, obviously, in this city. It's still retained, which is my biggest pet peeve with my home city of Toronto. That is not the case there. But here you definitely get the vibe of the history of this country by just strolling the streets of the old section of the city. It is a couple hours since I last joined you and it is just getting on sunset here in Ottawa. And we're going to go down to Chaudier Falls, the island in the middle of the river that I promised to. And that means that we're retracing our steps again right past Parliament at this time of night, which actually would be really, really picturesque anyway, and definitely worth a look. What really you would think is the Chateau Laurier is this fantastic building, which is, uh, I believe it's just an administrative building at this point, but it really strikes me in its architecture and its look as it's really a striking gothic-esque construction. I, I know it's probably uh, neo-gothic technically as per the period of when the parliament buildings were made. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I did know <laughs> the name of it at one point but uh, unfortunately I... The Confederation Building. Yes, that makes a lot of sense then. And right across from the Confederation Building, we have the Bank of Canada and its museum, of which we'll be doing tomorrow. It's only a short little thing, but we'll be doing it regardless. Um, it's free of charge to get inside. And if you have the time, while touring some of the other free museums or exhibits, and tours in Ottawa, chiefly this, the Senate and the Houses of Parliament, or the House of Commons, then you can come and check out the Bank of Canada. Now there used to be, and there still is actually, a path along the river, which would be a very picturesque route, although it being at a uh, water level, you won't get great sights of the city from that point other than of Hull, but unfortunately it is under construction currently. It's being, uh, rejuvenated as is most of the section of the city on this side as you'll notice as we get over. I won't cover too much as I don't want to clutter the video with unsightly material but it does remain a document of the city in this particular period of the summer of 2023 or early summer 2023. And now we have another iconic building in Canadian governmental architecture or public works. In fact I'd say this is probably one of the most recognizable judiciary, judiciary buildings that you can find in the world. And that is, of course, the Supreme Court of Canada, which also appears to be going under some renovations. I've long looked at this building, or seen pictures of it, mainly uh, in the first page of your law textbook, and thought, it's pretty small. Like, how do they make so many important decisions for the Canadian people and really how we, uh, how our government is directed and how we are governed based on judicial precedent? 
that this building would be bigger, but turns out it's actually not that small, as we'll find out in a second. It's my first time actually being over in this area. Louis Saint Laurent. It really is an imposing monolith of a building. Which I personally have a lot of taste for. I like the fact that it it appears to not even have an entry, which I'm sure is symbolic with the two-sided entry being probably symbolic of some sort. I am literally just curious because you mostly see only images of the front of this building and never the other sides of it to give a true depiction of how big it is. Granted, it's not immense, considering it has, I believe, several chambers inside. And then your offices, so when you consider modern needs and development over time, I believe this building is getting on to being about 100 years old. I'll confirm that. It still seems small. back of the Senate, sorry, the back of the Supreme Court building, complete with fountain not running. I think you can see why it's actually not featured in many pictures, is it's not really as striking from the back as it is from the front. And again, lacks a proper door. This building has really no, like, stately open. It's like it's almost like a prison in a way. I feel like that's symbolic in some nature. Like it is a fortress. A fortress of justice. Who knows? It's a nice 9-11. We're going down here next. That little pocket of land is where we'll see you in a moment. The next building that we are greeted by in these legislative buildings and civic slash governmental buildings is the National Archives. It's been a while since I've done my studying on architecture to succinctly nail down exactly the styles of these buildings. This one, however, I can definitely earmark as being constructed in the 50s to 60s. Again, I'm sure I'll be corrected if that's not true, but I welcome that as I avoid just reading off Wikipedia entries to everybody here and just have you enjoy the fair city that I'm also enjoying for the first time. It is a marvel of architecture and vision and uniformity. I'm really just amazed by how well put together the Capitol actually is. Like there was a, a very deliberate plan, and in fact there was a plan after uh, they took out all the railroad tracks from downtown to make it one of the biggest projects in Canadian history as far as urban planning is concerned. Everything is really laid out in squares in the downtown and very easy to find. If we take the stairwell, we'll get to our destination much quicker, so hopefully that is the case. We'll see you in a second. Eerie tunnels, anyone? Uh, this is actually a pedestrian way that we'll probably take on the way back, but I actually took a, uh, a tunnel directly underneath that. That was a driveway to get where we are now, which is, hey, the Ottawa River Pathway. Okay, we gotta hustle, as we're gonna lose the last available light that we have available here to actually see what we're traveling to. This whole island is actually starting to be rebuilt. It's a really small collection of islands with some historical buildings and mills attached to them, many of which have long been torn down. 
So we have now arrived on Victoria Island, which is uh, somewhat of an old industrial wasteland. Unfortunately, the sidewalk on the falls side, on that side of the bridge, is closed currently. So we'll see if we'll even get a view of our destination. We are hoping so. In fact, I definitely think we can because I can hear it over on this side and you can see the water sluice here. Clearly this was a derelict area that had been abandoned as the mills had moved out and the usefulness of the falls as a center for industry waned as time progressed. So now you have all these condos and office buildings that are being built here right now in light of a new sort of mini, I don't even know what it is, financial hub? Ottawa residents, please correct me what's planned here. There's definitely some residences, but then there's other places like this that are definitely not residences. And as you'll notice, there's very little to anyone out here. Granted, it is Sunday night, but it looks like only one or two of these buildings is actually finished right now, so watch for this space to be quite different next summer. I anticipate there being plenty of patios in this area alone. It does have a very remarkable view, however, of the Houses of Parliament in the distance. I think we're finally getting warm here as we've reached the end of Victoria Island and now we're going on to a different island, but you can definitely hear the falls and the birds in the distance. So we just have to go around here and then we should get a sight of them. tried to take take that on uh, that would probably be certain peril and they look way more intense than the ones at Niagara Falls if you come over into this little area we were just over on that viewing area but there's a actual rocky inlet where you get a fantastic view of the falls including this the most menacing part about it which is this sort of punch bowl element in between there it's the water just Right at that point, just is traveling at a remarkable rate. I would pray for any fish that are going through that right now. I consider it important to come here because this town was essentially built around these falls. The industry that it allowed created the possibility of a major town to be formed and what is one of the more northern capitals, not for Europe, but it is in an odd location for the country. There's clearly an old mill building here on this side. It took advantage of the power of that current at one form. We have a installation or a miniature installation. Waterway for the mill that we're at now next to it, but whoo -wee, these falls got some force. If you come down here, they're even more crazy because this is the actual falls themselves for sure. 
We'll get over on the other side and see if we can get a better picture of them from there. This old power generation station, I believe it is, has been left intact. It says high voltage there, so there must be some sort of danger for there being power. Um, maybe to be a museum at some point in the future. But I believe this is the best view that we will get of the falls themselves. I'm impressed, I must admit. I'm impressed. I should come back here during the day. Uh, really, it would have been better to be here right at sunset, but unfortunately we didn't get here quite in that time. It took a little bit longer than I anticipated. Uh, it's a bit of a dead end over here as well, just so you know when you reach the end of the island on this side. So we have some uh, a further dam system on this side that's modern. And another lookout point looking back over the Ottawa River towards Parliament. This reminds me of Monaco. Well, it's not quite Monaco. At the Chateau Laurier. And the reason why, we're only in Ottawa for one evening and I promised that we would go back to Bytown for the evening to at least show you at least one dive bar but to get there we're gonna go an alternative way down this side of the Laurier will take us down by the Rideau Canal which I promise to remember tomorrow to actually tour somewhat you obviously aren't gonna do all kilometers of it though. Well, it sounds like if you're looking for some drum and bass, that's the place to go to on a Sunday. The place we wanted to go to is the resident punk bar, known as Dominion Tavern. I love anything named Tavern. I'd say part of the charm of what I'm talking about this area is places like this food stand that's very colorful and just gives you the impression that you're at the beach, but instead you're in downtown Ottawa, which is very cool. There's nowhere in my home city, Toronto, quite like Byward Market, which really keeps drawing me back. There's really something for everyone in this area. Like I said, it's not exactly um, the most polished area, but it's old. It's the original section of the, of the town, so it makes sense that it would be a little bit rough around the edges. Um, but yeah, the, the energy, the vibe, you can tell that this has always been the heart of the city and its nightlife. Up on the left is Lafayette, one of the most notorious and oldest pubs, taverns in Ottawa. It is a new day here in Ottawa, and that means people are on their way to work, their governmental positions. And that's not us. We, on the other hand, are headed to the center of power in the Canadian government.
across this bridge as we leave by town behind in the background. So we're just leaving Green Island here, of which this governmental building is actually situated. It has one large complex on it, and this unusual tower structure next to another bridge, which is taking us off to a smaller little inlet island here, or a small little island known as Eagle Island, which we will cross. And then on the other side will be our destination. It should be mentioned that we just crossed the Rideau River. When you get to that side of the Bytown side of downtown Ottawa, you kind of get to a point where you're like, is there anything here that's not named Rideau? Like it's just Rideau Center, Rideau Canal, Rideau Street, Rue Rideau, Rideau Place, Rideau everywhere. Anyhow, when you get across the Rideau, then you come to a section of town that is really well kitted out. If I was to be suspicious, I would say a lot of government employees clearly live in this section of town, known as New Edinburgh. Very nice buildings. It is very nice, bucolic, palatial, whatever you want to call it around here. Let's just call it nice, but I guess that's suitable for an area of which the head of state lives. And we have a gateway just over here to go inside. Welcome to the grounds of Rideau Hall, official residence of the Governor General of Canada. However, because of the state of 24 Sussex Drive, which uh, can only be described as a dump now, unfortunately, if uh, accounts are to be trusted, the Prime Minister actually lives on the grounds of Rideau Hall now too. And that has been actually the case for some time now, as they decide what to do with the infrastructure of the official residence of the Prime Minister of Canada. A lot of parliamentary reconstruction projects are going on in the downtown core and at Parliament Hill, but for some reason, the official residence of the Prime Minister, that's not being looked at. We'll try to get over and have a quick look at that area at the end of this, of these grounds of which 24 Sussex Drive is attached to that looks over the river. There's a lot of stones for donations of various corporations and companies that have donated over the years for this botanical garden setup. And just so you know, these are not small grounds. It's fairly large, it's a fairly large park or public area. So much so that we don't even have the time to actually explore the entire grounds. And here it is, really the most stately of walks that you can get in Canada as you approach Rideau Hall. My first time ever being here. It is really impressive and suiting for a residence of a prime minister or head of state, or two heads of state, really, with the Governor General. For those of you that don't know, the Governor General is the Queen's representative of government in Canadian, in the Canadian government. Is Their primary role is to offer royal assent to any bill or legislation that comes down through the Canadian government and is passed through the House of Commons. That form... <coughs> Any bill or policy or government document has to be ascended by the Governor General, essentially just to ensure that all procedures are followed. This is, of course, as far as we go, you can get a real good sense of the Britishness of this particular construction, given the Royal Guards 
that would be in position if the Queen's representative was actually in-house, which they are not today, thus there are no guards present. But when there are official heads of state in the house, then you will have the Royal Guards outside. This is also where the Order of Canada is awarded, among many other official government positions or honors. Which is why it's somewhat confusing that Rideau Hall is not actually the residence of the Prime Minister. Instead, it's Rideau. <laughs> but the Prime Minister is making good to try to see that that is not the case anymore. No more public access. This is as far as we can go, unfortunately, because it does look like some official business is going on. But I'm glad that we came to see it. It's not very busy over here, oddly enough. It is early. It's just getting on to 9.30, so it's a little early for any tourist traffic. There's lots of grounds crew here, though. I'll say that much. It's a big building. It's hard to fit in the entire shot. I don't have a lens large enough to actually fit the whole thing in. This is a city of plaques, and of course I had to read the plaque for Rideau Hall there just to get a couple more interesting pieces of information. Uh, the cottage that originally was located here was built in 1865. It's kind of hard to think about the fact that a small cottage existed on all this land, but I guess at that time it was more like farmland and an estate. Shortly after its construction, the property was leased to the government as a temporary residence for the Governor General. And then in between the period of 1865 and 1970, 1917, various buildings were added to the complex to bring it to what its current form is now, which is a uh, collection of various buildings, almost like a campus of sorts, almost uh, gives the feel, at least when you look at it from impressions on a map, of a university campus of sorts. And then, of course, all the grounds were retained, and the government eventually cancelled the project to build the Governor General a different house and decided to stay here. And that's what brings us to Rideau Hall's current form today. Now at the end of these grounds, we'll be able to get a quick look at 24 Sussex Drive, the official residence of the Prime Minister of Canada, that is currently not being used. And we have the official entry of Rideau Hall, which is really, um, I think this is more of a stately and executive entryway. It's not for parks, maintenance people. As you can see, the Crown Guards on both sides, or at least their, their guard houses. On this side there is a, uh, a different gate that I noticed has a different set of clearances. This is the official area where the Queen would enter to stay at Rideau Hall officially, as this would be her residence if she were to stay in Ottawa. Thus this statue that was erected in 1992 in front of Parliament was moved here in 2019 during the renovations that are currently ongoing. And I think is actually a much more fitting spot for this statue. Everything's well thought out here in Ottawa. I have to give my, my country credit for its capital. I'm really impressed overall. And I have been for several days now. You wouldn't know it that this is our White House. These are the gates of 24 Sussex Drive, which is the official residence of the Prime Minister of Canada. And as you can see, it has not been used in some time. I don't know. What officially is the problem with this residence in the sense of like it definitely this does not look like something that you know a prime minister a head of state should be staying at but sadly this whole area is 
is being debated over as far as what they're going to do with it. Because you can't even see the residence there. It's, it is hidden, but there is some construction going on to some sort sort, but it doesn't seem like it's extensive by any stretch of the imagination. All right, this is the best shot we're going to get of it, and you still can't see anything before the military police come down on me. You can kind of see it. Really don't have a scooby as to why the official residence of the Prime Minister, well, it must not be that nice in there now. Um, it's definitely had renovations over the years. I know that during the Chrétien era, um, it, I think during his first term was the last time that it was renovated. Stephen Harper, former Prime Minister, also resided here, but I think the f official move and the decision to move to Rideau happened at that time. It's up in the air. Essentially, it's supposed to be the most stately home of any in the country. Is really just being left to rot currently. Um, meta, I, you can make any metaphors you want as far as that, how that relates to Canada, but uh, yeah, Rideau Hall looks fantastic. And I'm sure eventually they'll figure out what to do with 24 Sussex Drive. I hope they won't put a condo on top of it, but it certainly sounds like some people think that private development maybe should just take over in that area, which is a crazy thought to think of. It's too beautiful along the waterfront in Ottawa for that kind of transformation to occur. Uh, it would really ruin the character of the city, but that obviously is not going to happen. Well, who knows what the future holds for 24 Sussex Drive. So I've learned a little bit about the uh, Diefenbaker building, which was the building that we just passed. It was formerly the Ottawa City Hall, then was bought by the Government of Canada after a rather substantial $72 million renovation of which some would argue wasn't needed. The large structure in the background, the white edifice, is actually a observation tower that was never built. And the city had decided not to build the tower and instead, in order to placate the architect, Marsh Safdie, a very famous Canadian, American, Israeli architect, they put up that structure in its place. In addition to that, we have the Lester B. Pearson building here, opened in 1973. Really a brutalist edifice in the city of Ottawa. I love brutalism. This will be a building that we will visit at another time. Currently housing Global Affairs Canada. Royal Canadian Mint. I'm pretty sure that's uh, some money headed off to wherever it's supposed to be going, but here it is for all your loonies and toonies and polycarbonate bills are made inside the Royal Mint here. Obviously under guard and actually open for visitors, which I haven't actually looked into, which I should probably. Here, another famous building that I have now finally seen for the first time, which is the National Gallery. Of Canada which houses many controversial pieces of art. We were originally going to do a vlog of the building, however, due to copyright restrictions being what they are, and the fact that I can't show you any pieces of art from the collection on the video, we decided to take a pass at observing the gallery to the point where I can't even take a video technically of what is to the left, but considering it's not titled under the National Gallery, we can at least have a brief glimpse of Maman in the background there. All right, moving on. Less than 10 seconds, no copyright infringement made. All right, it looks like we arrived at the perfect time here at the canal as they are just refilling the docks here, or the locks, preparing for something. It's fascinating to know that, yes, this is a 200-year-old canal that's still operational, obviously, to this day. The gates have to be replaced every 12 years. 
And I believe it was at a total cost of $8 million last time that it was done. You can see that my man over here, he's cranking. It's still in manual operation. The iconic figure of Terry Fox right next to the Parliament of Canada it was a very fitting place. I'm sure during the run of hope, it traveled right past the front houses of Parliament. There is a demonstration going on in the House lawn right now, as you can hear in the background. But we are headed to the head of capitalism here in Canada, the Bank of Canada, which has a small museum that we're going to tour right now. It's self-guided, so we'll take you along on a complete tour. My smile is upside down. However, we're ready to go. Let's start. It's a completely interactive display. Tray. We have a bunch of other stuff here. I didn't know that this was not part of the actual exhibit, so we'll see this on the way out.
That's it for the Bank of Canada Museum. Quite a nice interactive setup. I probably should have spayed, spent a little bit more time there, but unfortunately, due to yet another tour on the other side of town that I gotta run over to now, uh, I didn't have enough time to dedicate to all the exhibits, but very fascinating. Cool to see like what a thousand dollar bill used to look like in its final pressing, among all those other currencies and the history of the bank. Good for kids to actually understand banking in relation to the country and how the country was built around banks. Uh, kind of important actually. I would definitely recommend taking anyone in the area down to that exhibit. It's also free of charge, so why not? All right, let's carry on. It is the lunch hour here in Ottawa on a Monday. So we're just gonna do a little bit of a tour on this side of the canal to wrap up our tour of Ottawa over 24 hours. We have not even nearly covered enough of what this city is about, including the canal itself. Which to be honest, because it does open in the winter time as the world's largest skating rink, and I do have a plan on perfecting my skating as a Canadian on that particular path. We'll definitely revisit at a time when we can do that. We'll also be taking one of those double-decker buses on our next trip here too. If you're interested in more history about the town, definitely check out the hostel jail vlog that I just came out of, which was a fascinating free tour of one of the more unusual institutions and tragic in the history of this city. And from what the guide was saying, most people in Ottawa don't even know exists, which is very odd to think. They say that Ottawa is the city that fun forgot. I don't necessarily agree, but you do get a feeling on a day like this Monday, how bureaucratic and quiet the city can be at times. There's another as the National Arts Center, which is another brilliant, brutalist building. One thing we haven't covered in this tour, but I should mention, is things like Le Breton Flats, and also the main downtown core, which is really like the business and financial and government hub, which is all the way inside this section of the city, basically in front of the Parliament Hill buildings. But there's not much that goes on there other than hotels and chain restaurants, so we're not going there today. Another good thing to note is the Lord Elgin Hotel, which is the other premium hotel in Ottawa. Located on Elgin Street itself and also a little cheaper than the Chateau Laurier as well. So if you want a more affordable option, not that much more affordable, you have the Lord Elgin.
it should be mentioned that we are roughly a week and a half away from Canada Day, thus the whole Canada Day festivities are being set up, which is why this area is not as nice as it normally would be. It's time for me to wrap up my stay in Ottawa and overall impressions. I know an ad campaign from a couple years back, maybe 10 years now, where they said, come and spend a weekend in Ottawa, stay three days, and a lot of people in my area of the country kind of laugh and we're like, what's there to do in Ottawa for three days? Well, it turns out there's so much to do. There's too much to do in three days. In fact, I couldn't even possibly fit it all in if I really wanted to. If you want to get a bit of Canadiana, at least maybe a true depiction of Canadiana, then you're gonna come to Ottawa and you're gonna have room to breathe. And you're also gonna have some great museums that are free of charge, some that aren't. World-class hotels, world-class restaurants and bars, the list goes on. And infrastructure-wise, I'd say I'm more impressed by what I see in the downtown core of Ottawa than what I see in my home city of Toronto. There's just more curiosities and more things to do. It really has impressed me. I hope you enjoyed the tour. It quite was a little bit all over the place. I know there's a lot of stuff that I didn't get to cover, but I actually want to leave the town open a bit for my next visit of which I'll cover a lot more, including the southern regions of Ottawa, uh, the Museum of Civilization, the Museum of History, Hull, Gatineau, all on the other side of the river. There's a lot more that I didn't even get covered in this particular trip that I'm sure I'll capture the next time I'm here. All right guys, thanks for dropping in.